American band Lemonheads are another band who've just finished an extensive European tour, this time to promote their album Lick. They were in London recently where they discussed the merits of not being a cult band. I am worried about people sacrificing goats outside of our gigs and things like no. that. And I did after our gig in Newport, I saw this five uh, Prague star that was drawn on the floor, which I was quite alarmed no, I've at. I've never really thought about that before, but come to think of it, that would be alarming if, if, if sort of ritual sacrifice was involved. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> no, seriously. I don't understand what would be bad about being a cult. What are the bad things about being a cult band? And what is a cult band? I don't know what that is. Like a s group, of, a small group of people who like it? We've never been that. Like, some people, like, mostly we weren't like a hip cult band ever. Like, not many people do like us, really. And some people, like, people who like more commercial stuff tend to like us. So I don't think we'll really be a cult band. I am pretty disturbed, though, at some of our gigs in Germany. People are coming up and wearing glasses like mine with my sort of haircut and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, trying to mimic my basic look. Uh, and I was uh, very uh, alarmed at that. I don't think people should follow my example. I mean... It works for you, but I don't know if it would work for... It's one of the problems of being on the fashion cutting edge, you know, and you're just going to have your followers. But I think people should think for themselves and adopt their own styles rather than just mimic, you know, the most glamorous, you know, here, here. Uh, uh, cult figure that's just come along. Myself, Corey, Luke, Brennan, and Evan Dando. So do you think then that um, ego is important in the band? Ego? Have you all got big egos? Yeah. Depends about what. <laughs> not, no, not really. We kind of pretend, we may make little jokes about it, but we don't really, I don't think, have a big... We're not that conceited about much. We're pleasantly surprised when anything good happens to us, which I think is a good sign. Yeah. And I mean, when I'm saying good is like, you know, marginal. A, a nice pensione yeah. or uh, a nice band to ride in or um, some excellent goulash or excellent whiskey. Excellent whiskey. And this tour, actually, to tell you the truth, we're much we're treated much better in Europe than we are, usually are in the United oh, States. Yeah, they literally rolled on out the, the red on the continent at least. have to say megastar at megastar we have mattresses to sleep on <laughs> yeah uh, and in the united states it's usually a floor or we sleep in the van right so no don't, there was it was pretty hard to get delusions of grandeur when there's 11 of us sleeping in one room or uh when we were waiting <laughs> at dover uh for two hours to be picked up and seagulls were attacking us and there was a rail strike simultaneously <laughs> so that's sort of deflated our european triumph <laughs> What do you think it takes for you to stand out, then, as a band? Uh, being as derivative as possible. No. <laughs> yes. No? I think it's it does. Sarcastic. I mean, it's... Hang on a minute. <laughs> That's our formula. Yeah. We'll grab, like, some records. We take a Stiff Little Fingers record, and we take an early replacements, early Who's Could Be record, kind of play them at the same time, and, like, listen to them and try to get something, something out of them, and, you know. For example, we call that Lemonheads. The, on the new album, Mallow Cup, is when we played Alternative Ulster next mm. to uh, what was it? Diane by Husker Du. And it, it no, 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 no. It was Suspect Device and, uh, and um, Suspect Device and um, what was the other song? Don't Ask Why by the place. Exactly, because it was, it's an unholy mixture. Mallow Cup, just like the chocolate and... Uh, marshmallow of a mallow cup, the unholy mixture of SLF and the replacements yeah. resulted in that remarkable collaboration. <laughs> but that's our formula, and you should try it yourself if you get two stereos. One thing we also found is that Metal Machine music, the Lou Reed album, sounds yeah. good with everything. Yeah. It sounds good with brass, it, well. it sounds good with... Um, uh, Bay City Rollers. Bay City Rollers with The Clash, with, every, with everywhere. But you have to get the two stereos going simultaneously. My name is Luca. 
It's a commercial product. Yeah. It's just a means to an end. It's the stardom that we crave. Mm. I decided that. Remember when we headlined at Wembley? That's when I, <laughs> I, I made the decision that this is the life for us. So we call our, we don't even call our things records anymore. We call them units, <laughs> right? And I call up Evan usually in the morning on my cellular phone. And I say, Evan, how many units of Lick did we shift today? And Evan would say, well, 3,000 CDs, 5,000 uh, LPs, and 6,000 in the DAT format. And I'd say, that's a lot of units. Yeah. And uh, we, that's, we just usually talk in business jargon. Someday those checks will stop flowing, Evan. <laughs> it's true. We might have to downgrade our lifestyle. But I, I just uh, live for now, and I'm, and I'm living very well you know, off my project right now, so I, I'm not going to worry about when the river runs dry. <laughs> we just look at things in sort of a five-year plan. And I think we'll be set until 1992. But when then Fortress Europe starts, we're going to have to, you know, go into a more competitive... Um, what about when Hong Kong has to... Um... We're worried about 1997 as well. And the Channel in 1993 is really disturbing us. But um, we'll cross that bridge when we jump off it. <laughs>